In Thailand, cannabis is out of the bag. Just a few months ago, people risked jail for using it. Now this country has one of the most liberal approaches in the world. That was a little bit surprising that in every corner you can find weed. Cannabis, or ganja as it's traditionally known here, has been decriminalised. And that's led to a bonanza, potentially worth billions of dollars. In Thailand's party hotspots, cannabis has burst into the open. You can literally smell it. Flowers, leaves, the whole plant. You want it, you can get it. <laughs> but uh, it's been a good ride and success. Business is booming? Booming, yes. Officially, the Thai government says cannabis should only be for medical or therapeutic use. And then you put under your tongue. Under my tongue? Yeah. And that'll help me sleep better? Yes. I don't want to take it now, then. I'm still working. <laughs> but the change in the law has left a grey area when it comes to recreational use. And not everyone's on board. We don't want to be the, uh, the cannabis heaven of the world. I want to find out how Thailand got to this point and whether it's destined to become the Amsterdam of Asia. In Bangkok's upmarket Sukhumvit area, Kitty Chopaka is still feeling shocked that cannabis has been unleashed. Oh my God, I never thought in my lifetime that this would actually happen. But at the same time, I knew that it, it has to be done. Kitty's one of scores of new so-called gunjapreneurs. She can now legally sell real cannabis alongside the cannabis-flavoured lollies she's known for. Sawadee-ka. Sawadee-ka. I'm Mazoe. Hi, I'm Kitty. So, welcome to Chopaka. So, what have you got here? Um, we have terpene gummies, which um, has been available since before the legalisation. Terpene gummies don't have the potent cannabis chemicals, just the flavour. It will give you, a, like, a very light effect, but at the same time, we now have flowers grown in Thailand and it smells like... Very strong. <laughs> absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Kitty's a cannabis smoker and a passionate advocate for what she says are the beneficial effects of ganja. These cannabis flowers have high levels of THC. That's the psychoactive chemical that gets people high. But Kitty says with responsible use, it's not harmful. The actual first question we ask is, have you used it before? Um, and then kind of really go through the process of what they want out of it. How to use safely is one of the key thing and how to use responsibly. <laughs> The bong, the word itself, is actually a Thai word. We're bringing back the culture. Cannabis used to grow wild in Thailand and was valued in traditional medicine. Before it was clamped down on with a tough narcotics act in the 1970s during the US-led war on drugs. My great-grandmother would sell cannabis and she would cure them with honey. Traditional, traditional, but she'll put it out on the grounds and then sell it to farmers on their way back um, from going out to the rice field. For 50 years, growers, dealers and users faced stiff penalties. Not anymore. How much is that worth? Um, let's see how much that weighs. So that's about five grams, so about over, a little bit over 100 Australian dollars. It was taken off the banned narcotics list in June this year, but there was no law spelling out who could use it or how. Draft legislation is still being debated in Parliament and Kitty's been advising on that. I never thought that um, Thailand would let something be delisted before they put in rules for it. 
But then again, Thailand, Thai politics surprised me all the time. <laughs> this is Thailand's public health minister, Anutin Chanvirakun, the day after cannabis was decriminalised. See, how will you pull this? Government-controlled medicinal cannabis had already been legal for four years, but Anutin put the plant back in the hands of the people, literally handing it out for free. <laughs> at the last election, he campaigned, promising that people could grow and use the plant at home as medicine, and farmers would have a new cash crop. And it was a winner. Anutin's party got the votes, the people got the cannabis. We are here to make a living, make a better living, make better quality of life. But delisting cannabis opened the door to people using it recreationally. And unless you're under 20, pregnant or breastfeeding, it's pretty much a free-for-all. <laughs> While the government advocates cannabis for medicinal use, I can't see many sick people when Kitty takes me down Bangkok's popular nightlife strip, Khao San Road. It's early, but it's busy already, huh? Yeah, it's gonna get worse. Worse or better? <laughs> Tourist hubs have roared back to life after COVID, and cannabis has added an extra attraction. Technically, people can be charged with being a nuisance for smoking in public, but no one seems to be complaining. I've heard some little cannabis shops popped up since June the 9th. Yeah. And the later it is, the more comes up. And are they all licensed? No. Nah. Those who are licensed are happy to tell us how it's going. Hi, it's got a, got a little gift for us. The society called out some from the criminal shit. But right now, no criminal anymore, which is the business. Just four months ago, none of this was here. Now it seems easier to get a joint than a pad thai. What kind of effect do you want? Um. I want a flavour. Um, I want something more on the sour side. What do you then have? I prefer... For a young industry operating in a legal grey area, it's looking pretty well established. And that's because before decriminalisation, there was a thriving underground scene here. The richest part of Bangkok is on that side. Mm -hmm. But this is a hood, baby. Okay. Sorinat Masayawanit, or beer as he's known, is a licensed cannabis dispenser. He opened his shop on the day the law changed. Here, let's go to the counter. Sawadee Welcome to Sukhumi. This, this is Mindy Green. She will explain to you what we got on the shelf. Yeah. She's our butt tender. Bud tender. Bud tender. Yeah. Not a bartender, a bud tender. Bud tender. Okay. Does it just blow your mind that you can do this all out in the open now? It's like living the dream every day. <laughs> I still pinch myself, you know. Like, like sometimes I used to cry driving here, like, fuck, is this real? Where does the weed come from? Uh, for this uh, month, uh, we have underground growers who's from Kanchanaburi, from Chiang Mai's Olive the Gardener, from Kankan is Can Kush. Whoa, 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 whoa! What's up? What's up? Special delivery. Got a weed. So, and this is Tai Loi from a local farmer in the border of Laos. Yeah. Back when he was a teenager, beer's use of cannabis cost him dearly. He was an actor starring in TV series and movies. How famous were you? It was actually number one rating sitcom in Thailand. Eleven years. I left in about maybe year five. Why did you leave? Uh, they write me out. They wrote you out. <laughs> Why? Of course, uh, you know, my bad behaviors and images around cannabis, you know, I got busted with weed. Not anymore. Yeah. Beer avoided jail, but the stigma ended his acting career. 
he went into the illegal cannabis industry, raking in thousands of dollars a month. But uh, I love this more. This is my dream job. It's, it's, this is not business. This is fucking personal. This one's so special. Sticky jasmine. This one, floral taste, smooth. And when you smoke, that's one is really, really good. Yeah. If you want something like lazy, chill, do nothing. I'm shaking my head. I just can't, I can't get my head around this yet, that in Thailand, cannabis is so out in the open now. They're talking about flavours, varieties, strength, and just a couple of months ago, that would have been unthinkable here. 3.5 of sticky jasmine and 2 grams of the apple fritter. Those are 4,050 baht. And in the space of about 10 minutes, you sold about 10,000 baht worth of stuff, so about just under 500 Australian dollars. Yeah. In less than 10 minutes. That's a good day. That's a good day? Yeah. Well, oh, that's a good 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, good 10 minutes. It's just making me look good on camera. <laughs> <laughs>
as a Minister of Public Health of Thailand, I have to go to almost every city. I'm more than willing to provide this convenience to myself. After a 40-minute flight from Bangkok, we arrive at Buriram province in the northeast. It's Anutin's home base and his party's stronghold. He's popular here. Cannabis has also raised his profile nationwide, and some say it's put him on track to be a future prime minister. We join the ministerial convoy into town. The medicinal cannabis industry has flourished under Anutin, and the minister checks our cameraman is ready for the tour. First crack? Yeah. Oh, OK. <laughs> We're going inside. This is one of the first community-run farms to be licensed. It started off growing cannabis high in the therapeutic chemical CBD for a local hospital, but is now also planning to sell plants directly to the public. This is cloning from the mother plant and after it can stand alone, they move this into the farm. They're trying to work out the best conditions for each variety. This produces 14% THC, mm -hmm. and they're trying to do experiment if they can plant it outdoor. But it's currently monsoon season here in Thailand, so hot houses are more reliable. And another two weeks, they will collect the flowers and send to the process factory. And what will these flowers be used for? Extraction. Cannabis extracts are tightly regulated. They must have low levels of the psychoactive chemical THC. This is the cannabis oil that was made from yeah. that extract over there. Okay. Yeah. It's a CBD oil which can be used for epilepsy, anxiety, nausea and insomnia. Mixed with olive oil. And what's this used for? You sleep. For sleeping? You can try. What they use is uh, put one drop on, on your knuckle. OK. And then you put under your tongue. Under my tongue? Yeah. And that'll help me sleep better? Yes. I don't want to take it now, then. I'm still working. <laughs> Farmers right across the country can now apply to grow all types of cannabis. I'm about to meet two sisters cashing in. Their farm was known for Japanese melons. Then four years ago, they pivoted to cannabis and haven't looked back. We on the TV, right? Yeah, we're so yeah, good. We, we love, <laughs> love each other <laughs> so much. <laughs> Jom Kwan and Jom Suda are loving life as gunjapreneurs. Jom Suda handles the business side. Jom Kwan's the grower. They started with hundreds of seeds, but it didn't go so well. Talk me through how it kind yes. of went. I'm starting with the 612. 612. Yeah. <laughs> 612 seeds. Yeah. Yes. After that, we cut all the mother All failed. All failed. Yeah. Yeah, at the first time. It's no way going to be success on the, on the first the time. First, we did try many, many things, like turn on the music. We talk with them, like, hi, beautiful girls. How are you? You look so green. When they have, like, someone to someone care take about care it. about them, like... Like, hi, kids. Yeah, that's some kind of like, ah, like, oh, that's my girl. It was a case of third time lucky. They started off supplying the local hospital. Now they're branching out into the recreational market. Jom Kwan is taking me to see her pride and joy. We come from like the outside area, so I don't want anything like too close with my baby. <laughs> the cannabis of your babies? Yes, that's my girl. OK. <laughs> your girls. She is right. still virgin now, so I don't want anyone to touch her. OK. <laughs> Put all your feet. These are my feet, OK? Yeah. That's one, two. Wow. Yeah. She's my girl at your phone stick. You can touch her, see? Oh, <laughs> it, feels, it feels quite spongy. Come in. Don't have to be scrubbed. Like, yeah. I don't have to be worried about the police here. Yeah, no. 
They had to outlay $80,000 to set this business up and broke even in the first year. It's like we're in the middle of the jungle. A square metre of melons used to earn them about $20. Cannabis fetches close to 1000 So I think it's better, right? <laughs> better, so much better, like... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Out on the land, though, many farmers are finding growing cannabis is harder than you think. Pongsak Manitun is a rice farmer in Buriram. Today, the paddies need spraying with fertiliser, but the sprayer is playing up. He makes about $4,500 a year in a good season, so the promise of a new cash crop was welcome. Pongsak's worked the family's three-acre land holding all his life, and he knows what works. So when Kun Anichin says that farmers can get rich from cannabis, what do you think of that? Have you spoken to other farmers? Are they trying to grow it? Pongsak says neither the hot weather nor the soil here are suitable for growing cannabis. And he says people are worried about growing it out in the open, where children could get their hands on it. Lots of people are worried about children. A national survey found the majority of Thais don't want them getting into Gunja culture. Do you feel as though Thailand rushed into this? คือเสรีได้แต่เสรีควรที่จะมาพร้อมกับกฎระเบียบข้อแนะนำนโยบายต่างๆที่มาพร้อมกันไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่มาแค่กัญชาเสรีแล้ว
that have some side effects from cannabis use, especially with um, edible cannabis that sometimes they don't know it contains cannabis. More than a thousand Thai doctors have pleaded with the government to suspend cannabis decriminalisation until the new law is finalised by the parliament. Obviously, we worry for young people that we have a data suggesting that it might cause a problem in their cognitive function in a long-term basis. But I want to emphasize that for, for my, my belief, nobody should use cannabis uh, as a recreation on a regular basis. I mean, because even if you are a grown-up man, if you use it long-term, I still believe that there might have some side effects in the future. He's hopeful the proposed new law will clamp down on recreational use. Do you think Thailand could become the Amsterdam of Asia? <laughs> um, I mean, it depends on the law. I, I, I don't want Thailand to be thought of as that destination. We don't want to be the, uh, the cannabis heaven of the world. Thank you for your time. For the man who's driven the policy, there are no regrets. I never once uh, tried to promote people using it from smoking or from uh, in the entertainment purpose. All the studies that we were given clearly stated that if we used cannabis plants in the correct way, it would create lots of opportunities, not only on revenue part, but also uh, the better health of the people. But this was a big shift, wasn't it, from completely illegal to now it's allowed. That, that's really significant, isn't it? When we work, we don't it? see it from that point. As long as we have created or established the uh, regulations and the law to control the use of these plants, we cannot step back. On Thailand's islands, some tourists are already noticing a difference. Thailand is famous among young travellers for its full moon parties on Koh Phang Yang. Some take drugs here, but no one's hiding cannabis anymore. I think it's a good thing because, like, young people, they like to try it out and, like, they can try it out here without being punished. Yeah, whatever, like, whatever you go now, uh, you know, it's Amsterdam again in, in Asia. It's not just young people lighting up at parties. Across the water on Koh Samui, this upmarket beach club is catering for everyone. Ready rolled joints are now a feature of the menu. Marijuana couldn't have come at a better time, you know. You can really feel it's reinvigorated the market. There's a new energy here. Resort owner Carl Lambs lived on Samui for 25 years. Chi Beach Club and his 200 other properties were just about deserted during COVID, but they're bouncing back. Most of our inquiries are, is it true you can smoke and sell marijuana in Thailand? And we can see from the bookings for Christmas, they're, they're crazy, you know. I haven't seen this kind of appetite for Koh Samui in 10 years. And you put that down to cannabis? Yeah, absolutely, it's a game changer, yeah. The customers we meet can't believe their luck. We came in there when marijuana wasn't available. And a month into our trip, it was like, you can buy weed everywhere. I mean, like, you know, in the, in the bars, in the cafes, on the street. And as a weed smoker, I was like, how cool is this? So... So they are writing new regulations at the moment. We, we actually kind of uh, welcome some sort of regulation. Yeah. We don't think it's a bad thing. <laughs> While Thailand's gone from zero tolerance to one of the most lax cannabis regimes in the world... <laughs> And then we have it's still grappling with the laws, the politics and the freedoms. For many, there's no going back. Is the genie out of the bottle now? Oh, hell yeah. Like, there's no way. Like, we're not going back in. There's, like, there's no way in hell that broke... That bottle is broken. It's gone. <laughs>